Criminal, an animated short story by Richard R. Riley. It was a warm Parisian night, and fog rose from the Seine. It mingled with the smog of industry and clouded the gas streetlights that dimly lit cobblestone streets. Beside the Seine, in the fourth arrondissement, was Le Four's prison, within which was the man Eugene Vidoc, whose wrists were shackled to the dungeon wall by cold steel chains and ankles bound by manacles. Eugene had brown, thick hair and an unkempt beard. He wore rags. He was still coming to terms with the scuffle where five men were needed to pin him down and capture him. He was speaking to Julien de Ferrier, the Parisian chief of police. Monsieur, I became a criminal the night my father had me arrested as a boy. When the police had turned up and taken him away to a cell that night, he had felt betrayed, devastated and humiliated by his father. Above all, he had felt angry, and that anger had stayed with him all his life, a chip on his shoulder that had been ever-present in his interactions and informed his life choices. Your trial for treason commences at first light, and you wish to reminisce about your father? Do not waste my time. I have watched the guillotine sever the head of my dear friend, Césaire. This cannot be my fate. The surprised look upon Césaire's face as his head fell to the ground was forever etched in his memory. He could not shake it, could not recall how César used to smile or the jovial times they had shared in local brothels. You have deserted from the army. You have stolen. You have forged. And you have destroyed marriages. Why would I care about your fate? Monsieur, I crave a life no longer on the run. Search is the fate of a criminal. Why would I care about what you crave? You are wasting my time. Monsieur, s'il vous plaît, let me tell you what I can do for you, so as not to waste any more of your precious time. Proceed. Thieves adore me. Hardened wretches esteem me. I drink and mingle in their circles. I have their trust. I know their hearts. I will gather their secrets and share them with you. We have informants ready. Why would I need you? Of your informants, have any been as cunning as me to escape prison so many times, even dressed as a nun to avoid detection? Sir, I will go to lengths those simpletons could not even imagine imagining. I couldn't trust you. Monsieur, when my late father had me arrested as a boy, my fate was sealed. In my mind, I became a criminal. It has taken my whole life to realize he did that out of love. I can be different. I can be of use to society. I can be the man my father knew I could be. I don't think you could. Monsieur, I've seen the end. I've seen my friend's head freed from his body by guillotine. I know that God's grace has all but kept me alive. I will be as devious I was in crime, but use those skills to catch the criminals and make Paris safer. Just as the rats carry the plague, I fear you spread a vile truth. Monsieur, s'il vous plaît, just give me one last chance, please. We will hold off your trial in the morning. But know this, you are one mistake from execution. I want intelligence. Actionable intelligence, or you'll be seeing your father 
sooner than you have thought. He would be tireless. He would be disciplined. He would use the tricks and the cons and the black arts he had learned. It was clear that Julien barely believed what was said, but that was fine, because he knew what was there in his heart. He felt the anger that had fueled his heart for so long start to thaw. The miserable wretch that was his soul felt a flicker of hope. His father had loved him and had wanted him to be the best he could, no matter how tragically he had tried to teach that lesson, and now he understood that it was only ever a lesson. He could become the man his father knew he could be.